All right, welcome. This is gonna be a quick review video on the Roro AX265 spool. Uh, what that is, it's a shallow BFS spool uh, that's for the Alphas SVTW. Uh, they have a whole bunch of different uh, spools that I've done other re uh, review videos on, uh, but I'm gonna put this one to the test. I'm gonna see if it, how similar it is to the Alphas SVTW. I'm gonna see uh, if I can work lures like this. This is a four gram, uh, this is a Creep AIM 46S. And also be doing some lighter hard baits as well, just to see kind of how it works with pitching, casting, and all that stuff that's compared to um, the Alphas at Air TW with the Roro spool that I've been using. These spools do come with a Roro micro bearing on there as well. It's most times they come with a stainless steel uh, bearing on there, which is still really good. It's gonna be quiet too, the ceramics. They're not bad, but they are a little bit louder. Uh, is which most people prefer the stainless steel and they do perform pretty well. All right, so there's a lot of different laydowns and stuff through here. And this is for me, uh, the ability to be able to pitch, but then also transition to casting is gonna be key. Uh, so I'll pitch a lot of these little pockets that are all through here. And then I'll be able to take some cast further up. Uh, one thing for me I do not like doing is adjusting my brake dial to go from pitching to casting because you're bound to make a mistake. And if you have a big uh, bird's nest out on the stream, uh, you're, you're pretty much going to be done for the day unless you bring extra line. So making sure that your equipment can uh, cancel a lot of those little mistakes that you normally can make and probably will make, uh, that's just going to make you more consistent uh, pitching and casting in streams. This lure does have a good shimmy on the on the drop. I don't know if you could see it, but this is on the same setting that I was using for casting too. Lure pitch is really nice. Actually, that, that lure has a nice little shimmy on the way down. It's actually, usually I'd use different lures and they, they kind of fall, they'll fall more horizontal or like vertical or, or they'll fall with the back, but that, that nice little shimmy there, that's really good for pitching. A couple further pitches, see how it pitches. I'll go back to a short one. Okay, now I'll transition right to casting up, up over here. Yeah, and it's still controlled the whole time. Uh, kind of the big, the big deal that can happen is um, you have to set your brakes really loose to pitch and then you have to turn them up for casting. So when you kind of do that back and forth, back and forth, that's, that's what I was talking about the mistakes. You're not getting consistency out of your reel. Yeah, even when I'm casting for distance, it's, I think I could probably turn this down another, I could probably turn it down to, well, it's on nine. So I bet I could probably turn it down to eight and be fine, but I want to get used to this spool first. It's, it performs a lot like the other Roro spools. It's not a big, big, huge difference from uh, spool to spool. But it's definitely more consistent than stock when casting for short range. Uh, kind of a big thing for me is that seeing how the inductor is fixed, it's constant braking the whole time, which for max distance, it's not that great. But for me, in these stream settings, having consistently operating brakes no matter how fast you're casting or how the wind is it's going to perform the same and that way you're not relying on that inductor coming in and out and having a little bit of change in your braking depending on how you're casting but even even flip casting it keeps a keeps a pretty good uh, consistency a lot of times when you're flip casting your brakes, your spool, your lure wants to either dive down or dive up. A lot of it's from technique, but some of your braking can make it your lure rise up or just kind of just act inconsistent. Yeah, that casting to pitching, like that transition back and forth, it it works great. And it, it for me, I'm, I'm a true believer in being able to pitch and cast, pitch and cast. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to mess with my brake settings. All right, so th this is gonna be a good area to test out uh, the short range casting accuracy and also the pitching distance that you can get in the spool, all without being able to change uh, brake dial settings.
I'm gonna transition right into backhand cast. Oh, a little bit further. Oh, we got one right here. Looks like a little brown trout. Let's go down. That's a little brown trout. That single barbless hook on that creep really makes a big difference. Nice brook trout there. Low and clear right now. Those fish get really spooky. So that's, I can't contribute that to the spool, but I'd say compared to most other BFS spools where I'm constantly having to adjust my brakes, I, I'd say more often than not, I can, I can fish these thick air cover areas a lot more confidently with consistent braking. All right, so this is where I caught that fish over here. I just jumped up over here. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about is this overhead cover here. Uh, you're gonna to have to have a spool that's kind of fast and free flowing. Uh, that can take a lot of thumb control uh, just from past experience. If you set your brakes for like very, very, very light, just in a general uh, BFS reel, that can lead to a lot of mistakes, especially if the wind's blowing. Uh, but you know, having that light, that light constant braking, I actually like to be able to pitch in it in the areas like this. I don't have to worry about the brakes, like the, my casting trajectory or kind of casting it up too much. Because generally, if you're pitching and you make a mistake, you, a lot of times uh, it's going to be that your pitch that your pitch uh, it comes up a little bit short. Like it might land like say like this or something, and it generally doesn't hang up in the air if your brakes are loose enough. So for me, I like to be able to, be able to pitch these areas. That was, a, that was a little hard of a hit, but. I don't, I don't like to worry about casting and everybody's different too. Some people prefer forehand casting, backhand casting, pitching. In this situation, I prefer pitching. So a modification that I did, I did, I just took the front hook off of this. Uh, this is the Creep AIM 46S. I took the front hook off of it. Uh, just so I can come through this wood a lot better. Uh, before when I was fishing this lure, it was a lot of stone. Uh, it came through a lot better uh, having the front hook on there. But here, so much wood that's gonna get hung up. So I take the back hook, I mean the front hook off of my lures that are about, you know, that 40 to 50 centimeter size, I mean a millimeter size. And these awkward cast angles, this is what I really like. Oh, a little bit loud splash, definitely my fault. Right, so one thing that's really going to help you if you're pitching, casting, anything, especially with these, uh, if it, because it gets a little bit darker out here uh, earlier, and also there's a lot of different laydowns and covers, so you can't really track your lure that well because with these short, these short casts, you can see your lure a little bit, especially if you're using smaller lures, it's harder. I like using a high visibility line. This is the Verivest. This is Super Trout uh, Advanced Sight Edition. It's a really tough line. I did a review video on it. I'll put that. I'll put that link up above. Uh, Overall, I really do like having a high vis line. I used to not really be sold on it too well, but I actually really do like a, a, a high vis line for uh, this type of fishing around cover and short stream casting. All right, now I'm switching lures. Uh, this is the Rapala X-Rap 04. It's significantly lighter. Um, I think this is just under two grams, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I did put a single barbless hook on the back right there. And uh, it's a really good lure. It's, it's, it has, it, it's more of a suspending lure. It, it does have a slow float if, I, if I'm not mistaken. And it's really good for the, these more shallow waters and the fish are really, really timid right now. So a little bit more subtle presentation versus having a heavier normal sinking, uh, like a JDM trout lure. They should be able to get more bites right now. And it's gonna test out, uh, these, they're kind of, kind of hard to cast sometimes. So this is really gonna test a row or a spool for control and also just be able to cast that weight consistently. I'm gonna keep my I'm gonna keep my brakes on seven. Oop. Definitely went higher. Definitely went higher than I wanted it to. There we go. I'm gonna have to turn my brakes down. Uh, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but I like to turn my brakes down when I have lighter lures. There you go.
This is where the big difference between the standard braking, uh, which is a little bit less braking, and the thickened model, like which is in here, this is where the difference is really gonna shine uh, with using the standard model for uh, braking. Yeah, see, that, that's a lot better. I just turned that down to four, and now it feels just like casting that, uh, that creep aim. Do a couple more casts just to get myself calibrated. Yeah, this cast it really well. Now I turn the brakes down. Uh, usually I wouldn't turn the brakes down that low on the uh, Alpha's Air TW with the standards. I mean, the, yeah, the Alpha's Air TW with the standard spool. But the brakes being down to four, it actually feels really good right now casting this. I'm not getting any loose line or anything like that going. All right, so overall the, sp the spool performed really well. Uh, I was kind of surprised, to be honest, uh, with the thickened model casting these lighter lures. Most times I use like panfish jigs in lakes or with the standard model, I really like them for finesse bass, like Ned rigs, weightless worms, stuff like that. But it does hold its own in the streams very, very well. I was, I was really surprised. Uh, I know that at Bait Finesse Empire, Amir is gonna be getting these in. Uh, th these spools, the uh, thick and breaking spools on the Alphas SVTW. And I, I really think if you are going to really expand any reel, this doesn't have to be this, getting an aftermarket BFS spool for a traditional bass reel, it, if you're not going to have a dedicated BFS setup, you kind of bounce back and forth between stream fishing and then once in a while, then you go like bass fishing or whatever. It's definitely the way to go versus just buying a BFS reel. But if you do a lot of BFS fishing, you might just want to buy a BFS reel. That way you're not uh, switching spools back and forth. But it is a, a really good way to get the most money out of your reels. And it actually performs very, very well. So they're definitely worth the look.